Well, thanks, Louis. Thanks for coming in and sharing uh, some insight into your latest acquisition as a company. Uh, Zestweg is bought into a transformer company, TSS Transformers. Can you give us some background to that deal? Uh, quite simply, um, this, this deal really stems from, from uh, a decision that was made by the group quite some time back. The, the board decided uh, probably 10, 12 years back already that we need to start embarking on, a, on a, a trade of acquisition to really stimulate the local presentation and to be less reliant on an import component. And the initially the target was to have a 50-50 balance to have a, an import component of and then 50% uh, of our business to be a local component. It's taken us a couple of years to get there and we've had a, couple of, a good couple of transactions and uh, I must say that strategy has worked very well for us. Um, but more importantly, um, the TSS acquisition was far more strategic in terms of our thinking than the previous one that we did when we bought uh, today what's called uh, WTA or Vec Transformers Africa, which was previously Hawker Sidley. In the sense really is um, we previously were very active in the market of Transformers 20 MVA and larger. And that's really the, the scope where you can start competing when you are importing. When you want to compete in the smaller sizes to have the import duties as well as um, shipping and so forth, it really starts becoming a problem for us. And uh, the Hawker City transaction was really to stimulate that. But we also soon realized that we needed to expand Hawker City or the now today WTA Transformers um, to become a bit more competitive in a bigger scope of uh, supply. And it pushed the benchmark for us to really start act, uh, acting on, on a 40 MBA requirement, up to 40 MBA requirement. And the current facilities that we have at uh, Big Transformers Africa just was not sufficient. And uh, strategically, we decided that it's time for us to embark on a, a bit of a different um, um, avenue, which we're not really used to before. And that's embarking on to a repair kind of uh, strategy. And uh, once again, we decided that uh, very strategically because of the number of transformers that we have in the country. Um, over the last, uh, s between seven and ten years, we supplied a huge number of transformers, prim primarily to, to Eskom. And uh, we felt the need that we needed to start gearing ourselves to be able to be more than just a transformer supplier, but also to, to be able to provide services. And, of course, if repairs are needed. Um, and that really opened the door for us in terms of TSS. TSS is, has the skill, they've got the capacity, and uh, we're now very well positioned. This transaction now really puts us in the space to comfortably manufacture transformers above 10 MVA up to about 50 MVA. And uh, that primarily was the, 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 the rationale in terms of acquisition. So the capacity is created, um, the skills is given us, and of course the facilities that we now have. We are now very well positioned to compete very aggressively in that sector of market. And what is the sort of uh, actual manufacturing service and repair capability that you've got and how many staff, additional staff, have you taken on? In the acquisition of TSS, we've now taken on additional approximately 100 to 110 uh, uh, heads, uh, which still we're not uh, too uncomfortable uh, with that. Uh, the, the big thing for us, of course, is the strategic importance of uh, the test labs that we have there for oil. Uh, the servicing that we have, the mobile service teams that we have, has really put us into a space that we, that we, as I said, we haven't been before. And uh, that makes me very excited because if I look at the installed base that we have, and of course, again, I'm referring to the network that we have in Africa uh, also, that's going to bring a tremendous amount of opportunities for us for TSS. And looking at that market, the balance between South African markets versus the rest of the region, what, is the, what are the opportunities for transformers? At the moment, for both organizations, WTA and TSS, it is primarily South African based. Uh, we do do a number of transformers uh, at the moment with WTA that goes to mining industries, uh, mines in Africa and so forth, but that's probably around 20 to 30 percent of our, of our market share. Um, but moving forward, we're seeing that, that picture change uh, quite significantly. The other big rationale behind the acquisition is, of course, uh, as we've done with many of our other manufacturing operations in South Africa, is we're gearing them to, be to become a, a center of excellence, if you wish. And uh, we're treating them as if they're any other factory from VEG, uh, with the outlook that we can decide, or VEG internationally can decide, whether they want to manufacture the transformers, typically in South Africa, or whether they want to m manufacture them in Brazil. And would your client base be mostly public sector? And what does it mean for things like localization demands as well as black economic empowerment? Yeah. Um, the transaction, of course, speaks to both of those. 
Uh, we've recently restructured the company to introduce a, a, a BE a partner uh, by means of a, of a trust, and we've been quite uh, uh, detailed about that. Um, of course, um, we have responded quite aggressively to the, the, the local needs of uh, localization. Therefore, the transaction initially with Transformers with uh, uh, WTA or Hawker Siddeley, and now with TSS in support of that, uh, going into bigger sizes. So when the pressure was initially with us being a, prim a primary importer of large Transformers for Eskom, uh, we've responded to Eskom's pressure and uh, we've done so positively. And all South Africans are touched by the current power crisis and the load shedding events. Um, are you finding that, uh, can you put us in a picture of what, how important the transformer is in ensuring security of supply? Yeah, look, uh, whether it's uh, power generation or whether it's uh, transmission or distribution, a transformer is, is critical to the network uh, and power gen generation is in South Africa, not just from Eskom point of view, but all the municipalities. I don't think our economy would be able to operate without, without a decent uh, transformer infrastructure. And um, sadly enough, I think um, with the, the build of, of Kassili and, and Madupi power stations, a lot of the resources and the financial resources at least have gone into, into building those, which are clearly important. Um, but on the other side, we also see that the lack of infrastructure maintenance is starting to take its toll. And uh, that's going to be our next big pressure. And then you're part of a, a bigger group, a Brazilian company, which has got big growth aspirations. I think they've got a strategy 2020 to grow the business. You, the uh, very much the African side of that business. How is that growth strategy playing out both internationally and in Africa? From a big point of view, their the strategy is very aggressive. Uh, their 2020 plan uh, has been in the making for, for a couple of years now. And um, obviously Africa is key to, to them achieving that, that objective. When, you have an, uh, in, in, when you're in South America and you have the lion's share of the market, it's not so easy to grow. For us in South Africa, we realized just to rely on uh, traditional organic growth and selling products into Africa is clearly not going to be sustainable in achieving our goals. And part and parcel of the of the decisions that we made is that we needed to to grow by acquisition, and therefore this is where we are today. Uh, we've been very aggressive in in uh, in South Africa with acquisitions. And uh, besides the transformer acquisition, what other acquisitions have you done? And are you do you remain acquisitive even after this deal? Very much so. Uh, in the past, we've, we've bought a, a local manufacturing facility which produces uh, gensets in South Africa. And of course, we bought Shaw Controls, which has been a, a really key uh, sector of our business in terms of uh, MCCs and, and, and uh, drives uh, sector. Um, that has been really a wonderful acquisition for us. We're very, very pleased that we got into that sector. Of course, now the Transformers, uh, both WTA and TSS. And uh, our appetite is not, we, we still have a very keen appetite. And um, watch the space, there's a couple more coming. And which sectors are you particularly interested both to grow your footprint in? We've always maintained strategically that we need to have something that's going to be synergetic to our, to our core business. And our core business has always been electric motors. And everything that goes along with electric motors, which is electrical, uh, are sectors that we'll be involved in. And um, that strategy will maintain. And if you look at what you now, Im your import versus export or your localized, localized uh, balance, is it now uh, a much more balanced portfolio? It is very much so. We've almost achieved a 50-50% uh, balance. Um, and um, yeah, I think we, we probably will do a lot more uh, by means of acquisition and that, that scale might, might be tipping over more, more than, uh, than we had before. But in terms of the 50-50 the balance, we're pretty much there. And in terms of your export aspirations? Yeah, no, we have a, a huge uh, a growth opportunity, uh, in particularly in Africa. Uh, but with the manufacturing facilities, it's not just limited to Africa for that matter, but our responsibility specifically is Africa. And we realize with the, with the current e economic situation in South Africa, uh, we really have a lot of pressure. And therefore, we've upped our, our game in what we're doing and what we're playing in Africa. And I have to say that's starting to now pay, pay dividends. But the reality is we need to change the game plan. We need to become a lot more uh, innovative in how we're doing business. And Africa for us is the key. We have a whole Africa division that we've established. And uh, we're putting a, a huge emphasis in uh, upping our, our activities in Africa. And when you look at your order backlog, would you say Africa is, as a percentage is starting to grow into a fairly sizable position? 
Very much so. We previously would have had our order book around 70% being local uh, and 30% being Africa. And uh, now it's probably sitting around 60% local and 40% in Africa. So that, that is busy turning. And given that you're both an importer and a local manufacturer, is the, is the weaker rand a, hand, uh, a hindrance or is it a help at the moment? Yes, we, we obviously have the, um, dare I say, the convenience, but also the inconvenience. Obviously, importing uh, the Rand Dollar Exchange Rate has, has a, uh, we have a lot of challenges with that. But of course, being a local manufacturer and exporting also brings, us, brings a benefit on the other end. So it's really finally ma tuning and, and, and balancing the act in terms of our, our exposure with dollars importing against the orders uh, backlog in, do in dollars uh, by exporting. So we're trying to manage it very, very carefully. Uh, it is something that is uh, very high on the agenda every day uh, that we need to monitor. But yes, obviously the Rand dollar exchange rate is a challenge for us. And now that you're a manufacturer as well, and uh, there's a really lackluster performance across the manufacturing sector, you're talking the word growth. Many others are not talking in that language anymore. How are you able to grow uh, as a manufacturer, given the, the difficult circumstances? By really looking um, at, the, at the market and the, the one of the key areas that, we, that we're focusing on is sectors that we historically probably would not have been in. Um, and I'm the first one to acknowledge probably se sectors such as water and wastewater uh, in the past has been areas that we've not been extremely aggressive on. And those are the types of sectors that we, that we now are getting uh, massively aggressive and um, changing our game plan. Mining has in the past been between 60 and 70 percent of our business. And with the commodity prices and the way they are uh, and the mining sector being depressed in South Africa as, as, as we're experiencing, um, we have to change our game plan completely and, and we need to venture into, into sectors of the market that we historically have not been strong. And finally, if you could just talk about your immediate outlook for this current year and how you see it evolving over the next couple of years. The, the situation in South Africa, by my definition, is, is rather complex. But in order to answer the question, I, I need to look at what's happening in the Far East and in particular what's happening in China. Um, we have factories in China and uh, I sp regularly speak to our counterparts there. And um, I think the Chinese uh, um, economy has really slowed down a lot. And of course, by default, it's starting to, to have an impact on the commodities. And uh, when I speak to my counterparts overseas and the forecast that we have is we're seeing that only turning in, in probably the latter part of 2017. So in, in between now and then, we really have to be sharp at what we do. And as I said, we need to start venturing into, into areas that we haven't, in, haven't been in before. Mm. And finally, finally, what are your order books looking like? At the moment, uh, fortunately for us, um, it's not as great as what we'd like for it to be. But I must say we've been uh, rather fortunate. We've had one or two nice orders uh, coming out of Africa. And uh, being dollar-based, it has helped us uh, in terms of our, our RAND order book. So at the moment, yes, we have pressure, uh, but there's no crisis time yet. Thanks very much, and thanks for coming in. Thank you very thanks much. You.